This is a demonstration to show how to take a water sample uh, for radon analysis. Uh, should you live in the city, I wouldn't worry too much about the, your water because usually the municipalities and, and townships usually uh, treat their water uh, uh, well. They agitate their water uh, a lot to actually allow all the gases and impurities to escape from, from the water. So uh, usually uh, the municipalities will do the test themselves and not, uh, it's not up to the, uh, the homeowners to do this. Uh, but the thing is that uh, if you're on the well or on the, taking water from a lake, a stream or a river, this might be something you should be doing for yourself. Uh, the entry point, uh, you should look for the entry point of your well to the house. Um, Usually, uh, right where the water actually uh, uh, the uh, actually enters the home, uh, there's usually, there's usually a tap there uh, to actually empty the lines. Should there be uh, uh, some repairs or some addition uh, to your plumbing in the house, so uh, try to take uh, an end, uh, uh, your water from uh, an area uh, before any type of water treatment. Uh, uh, systems such as a water purifier or a water softener or a, a reverse osmosis systems. Uh, those, those will basically agitate the water and release some of the radon from your water. You don't want that to happen. You want to be before uh, these, these uh, water agitators. Uh, so the, the, the best way to do this is to uh, connect a hose as such to your to your tap, but make sure there's no aerators that is straight from uh, from the pipes themselves. Aerators will again release some radon from your water. So the first thing that's recommended is to run your water for a good 20 minutes before you uh, fill your bucket. And the reason to do this is to actually uh, empty your pipes from uh, any water and uh, this way uh, you'll be getting the water straight from the bottom of the well, which is probably where uh, the highest concentrations of radon are in, the, in, your, uh, in your water system. So once you run the water for, for 20 minutes, now you're ready to actually fill your bucket. And I would take the biggest bucket that you can find in your house. So first thing I need to do is to basically cover the tip of your hose with water. That will prevent any type of splashing or bubbles or anything like that from entering your, your sample here. And just basically fill the bucket very slowly while keeping the tip of the hose always covered in the bottom of your bucket. Okay, now once uh, you start filling the bucket, uh, fill it all the way up to the top. Uh, it, you want to have like a, as much water in your sample as you can, as you can get. So uh, fill it all the way up and remember to keep the tip of the hose at the bottom of the bucket and always make sure that you don't agitate the water. Uh, water has a surface tension uh, right on top. It, it acts a bit like a, a piece of saran wrap. Uh, if you agitate it, you're like punching holes in the saran wrap in that, in that surface tension. And that's what releases the gases into the atmosphere. So just make sure that you don't agitate the water and then once your, your bucket is full, just pull out your hose very gently and just put it aside and then we'll proceed to the next step which is to collect uh, a, 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 a sample of water in a 500 mil uh, um, mason jar uh, and then afterwards uh, uh, from the bucket itself. All right, so uh, remember, don't agitate the water. Surface tension is what holds the, 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 the gases underneath the water. Okay, now that our bucket is filled, uh, uh, actually this is not a bucket, but I'm, uh, used, I'm using an aquarium here to actually show you how to collect the water from the bucket that you just filled with the water. Um, there are several jars on the market and uh, 
my preference is still the old mason jar because it seals very well it's got a very large mouth and very very uh, uh, small shoulders uh, uh, in while this other type of container here has a very small mouth and very very um, extended uh, shoulders um, why are the shoulders a problem? Well, they're a problem because when you go in to fill in the water, it's very hard to fill it up, especially with air being trapped in these shoulders here in these corners. Uh, it's very hard to actually uh, fill this jar up without creating any bubbles or, or any type of uh, splashing or agitation of the water, uh, which results in the loss of radon, which is something that you don't want to you don't want to lose. You want to get the full spectrum of the of the, the radon in your water. Um, I still prefer the old mason jar here, but the thing that you'll see you'll you'll see why. Um, first of all, uh, what I do is that I actually introduce the the um, the jar's lip in first, and then I slowly rotate the jar around. And if you notice, I'm not splashing any water or creating any bubbles at all. And still underwater, I actually put the jar, put the lid back on the jar, and seal it nice and tight. And then when you pull it out of the water, make sure there is no bubbles at all, because any type of bubbles in in the jar will actually. Uh, the radon will escape to that bubble, and when you open the jar up, this uh, the radon will be lost. And uh, so, in other words, you will be counting less uh, radon particles uh, as there as there should be. The other thing that people do to make sure that the the, uh, the uh, jars are well sealed is that they actually put a piece of electrical tape around the edge, just like this. And what that does is that it actually holds the cover in place and actually prevents air from penetrating inside the jar. And there you have it. A sample to be sent in. And again, make sure there's no bubbles in your sample. Okay, now that you've uh, taken uh, a water sample from your tap, uh, uh, we, uh, we'd like to have you send it in to our facility within the next four days. Uh, why four days? It's because the, uh, the half-life of uh, radon is 3.9 days. So we'd like to get it before the, its half-life is over. So uh, the, uh, the, the other thing too that I'd like to mention and to emphasize is please take down the exact time at which you've taken the sample. Um, it's very important, uh, this is a very important time uh, to note down because from the moment that you've taken the sample, the radon will start to decay in your sample. So we'd like to get it before it reaches its half-life uh, and at the same time you'll get better results uh, from, from, from this action. Uh, you can actually send it in to uh, our, our um, facility in Ottawa, which is 147 Colonnade Road. Uh, in, in Ottawa and uh, for our full address uh, please consult our website it's www.pylonelectronics-radon.com and you'll find all the information that you all of our coordinates that you need uh, for uh, to send it in uh, the other thing too is that when you do take the sample uh, make sure that you're taking it as close to the well as possible prior to any type of um, uh, water treatment uh, equipment such as a water softener, a water purifier, or a reverse osmosis because those devices will actually uh, uh, agitate your water and uh, a lot of radon will be lost uh, after those instruments uh, have processed the water. So it's a very good thing to do uh, to make sure that there's no aerators on that tap and also that uh, you do set it in before the next four days. Thank you.